your dreams can become real. We all have several ideas running through our minds, there are dreams we want to bring into reality, and many of them honorable, but pretty little seems to get actualized. We wish we could do more with our lives but we still find ourselves stuck in the same place day in day out without having achieved much. The first hindrance to achieving in our lives is a wrong mindset. We are what we think. The Bible admonishes us to guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life, Proverbs 4:23 NLT. It is easy to get caught up in the mindsets of the people we roll with, and if these people are not operating with ungodly mindsets we end up repeatedly failing at things we do and therefore lose belief in ourselves and in our ability to do. Our self-confidence takes a dip as we keep hearing their whining and as we keep having setbacks. Our willingness to keep trying goes and we get back into our old ways of doing nothing and being just like the people around us. The second hindrance we face is our own words. We sabotage our own efforts through our negative confessions. We get into the habit of speaking the language of defeat that our folks speak rather than creating what we want to see through the speaking of words of faith. In Prov 12:14, the Bible says from the fruit of their lips people are filled with good things, and the work of their hands brings them reward. It is difficult for us to possess goodness when our lips are confessing something else. Jesus said in Luke 6:45, A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. When we fail to saturate our hearts and minds with God's Word, we become liable to speaking out of sync with the will of God. When our hearts are filled in abundance with God's Word, we will speak His will which would then be energized by His Spirit working in us to bring them to pass in our lives. The other challenge that faces us is our reluctance to put in purposeful action towards the attainment of our goals in life. This is usually because we generate wishes without setting goals. A wish is simply a want desire, or something we long for, whilst a goal is the result or achievement which becomes a practical guide to your daily actions. Some of us rather than set goals for ourselves, set goals for God as to what we want Him to for us without setting goals as to what we have to do ourselves. Even for those of us who set personal goals, those goals are often vague rather than being clear and specific. Any statement that can be properly interpreted in more than one way is vague whilst a specific statement can be properly interpreted in only one way. Our daily actions should necessarily be contributing towards the achievements of our goals. In Phil 4.13 Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When we are under God's will we are capable of a lot. I can do all things presupposes that there are things that are responsibility to do and others that are God's responsibility. Many of us refuse to do when we are capable of doing and many also seek to do things which are motivated by selfish desires or our attempts to be like others. Prayer cannot be a replacement for working to earn a living. For even while we were with you, we gave you this command, if anyone is unwilling to work, he shall not eat. Yet we hear that some of you are leading undisciplined lives and accomplishing nothing but being busy bodies. We command and urge such people by our Lord Jesus Christ to begin working quietly to earn their own living, 1 Thess 3 10 12. In Proverbs 6 to 6 11 the Bible says, Go to the end, you lazy man. Observe its ways and become wise. 7 It has no commander, officer, or ruler, 8 But prepares its provisions in the summer and gathers its food in the harvest. 9 How long will you lie down, lazy man? When will you get up from your sleep? 10 A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, 11 And your poverty will come on you like a bandit and your desperation like an armed man. The industriousness of the ant as described in this passage suggests that we need to plan to avoid poverty. The same God who said we should not take thought of tomorrow also said that we should learn from the ant. Living a life skewed to either side creates problems for us. Putting the two together means that much as we have to prepare ourselves against the winter seasons of life by making use of prevailing opportunities, it is also important that we live in the present, not allowing the fears of the future or past failures to distract us from being focused on the task at hand of executing our plans. The phrase, having no commander, officer, 
or ruler implies self-motivation. A self-motivated person has the following characteristics. A drive to achieve a certain standard of excellence. Knowing the God we serve and seeking His glory should inspire in us a desire for greatness and excellence in our lives. We need to derive inspiration from God's Word and from the stories of successful people. He has commitment, not only to the self but particularly to working for the group interests. No ant gathers food for itself alone but contributes to the group effort, and we have all witnessed the beauty of ants working together. Many of us are motivated by the prospect of looking better than others not by the group interests or the interests of others. If we want to succeed we must realize that that success is tied to the success of others. When we are willing to combine our effort with that of others extraordinary things happen. And when it is the glory of God we seek we do not care who gets the credit. He has initiative, in the sense that he is always ready to act on opportunities and to do the extra, doing what has to be done without waiting for others who can also do same. He does not care about what others are doing or not doing. He is optimistic, persisting in pursuing goals despite obstacles and setbacks. He is energized by hope of success rather than by fear of failure. When setbacks occur he sees them as due to manageable circumstances rather than as a result of problems with his personality. Success, and for that matter failure, is a product of our habits rather than an event. A habit is something that has become wired into your brain, meaning that there are a number of neurons solidly networked supporting every habit. Before the brain establishes such a network of neurons it requires that a particular mental behavior or a set of mental behaviors be carried out over and over and over again. When established, those habits can be carried out without the need for mental effort. An axe is sharpened through the repeated application of a certain force to its edge and this is represented by the repeated requisite mental behaviors we need to carry out if we seek to develop positive habits. If we want to succeed we must be willing to keep trying over and over again. In 1 Corinthians the Bible admonishes us to be steadfast and unmovable, abounding in God's work. We give up too easily. The self-belief implied in the statement can do all things is founded on the ensuing statement, through Christ who strengthens me. We need to draw on the strength at all times. In short, the passage about the end points to the need for us to make use of our brains if we are to be successful. As humans we possess a huge brain with immense capabilities that are much greater than that of an ant. God expects us to maximize the use of our brains, and therefore would not ordinarily intervene for us if we fail to think, and suffer lack in our lives as a result. It is to God's glory that as believers we apply our brain power to overcome the challenges that life presents. When he charged Adam to have dominion and to subdue the earth, it was exactly because he had made provision in the form of a highly sophisticated brain equipped to do just that. The Bible points out in Ecclesiastes 10:10 10, 10 that, if the axe is dull and its edge unsharpened, more strength is needed, but skill will bring success. Making good use of our brains obviously reduces how much effort we have to apply in order to attain our goals in life. We cannot seek to prosper financially as believers without doing. All the world over, money comes to those who think and do, not to those who sit around doing nothing. Parted Jordan rivers are for believers who are going somewhere. E.S. Show more.